Hello and welcome to The Last Andy, a board game podcast coming to you from a trio of thrilling countries across Europe. I am joined here today by Alessio. Hello. And Fen. Hello. And I am your host, Audrey. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about Marvel Champions, Mutant Genesis, Marvel United, and no more Marvel. We will uh, wrap it up with Shamans. But first of all, it's time for the last standy catch-up. What's been up with you, Alessio? Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm always surprised by this question. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've been up to uh, Marvel Snap, actually. So that, that, that is, uh, uh, probably you know, it's an up game, an addictive uh, game everyone is playing. It's uh, basically a game of air, land and sea with changed rules and collectible cards. And it's quite fun. Uh, I, I don't think it's worth a lot of time, but it doesn't demand a lot of time. So it's kind of fun as long as I'm not asked for a lot of money. Um, that's basically it. I'm evaluating the game. I was impressed by how it was similar to Airland and Sea. And uh, by the way, I, I, I learned today that there's a variant of Airland and Sea, uh, not with uh, WW2 uh, warriors, but soldiers and stuff, but uh, with animals, which is uh, absolutely cool, and I have to test it. But that's basically it. It's your turn then, Audrey. What have you been up to? Uh, I'm, I'm good, thank you. Um, as for board game stuff, I really don't have a lot to tell about lately because I haven't taken much time to play. Uh, because um, yeah, since mid-August-ish, my work has picked up a bit. So I, I am, uh, let's say, doing lots of work work uh, because eat you see is a good thing i like to eat um so my time has not been that much devoted to board games i have to be honest uh but what i can say though is more related to this episode today because today is a very marvelly day for me you see because i've been rewatching uh x-men uh, starting from uh first class i i love this one um and this evening, uh, with my husband, we're going to go and see the new Black Panther. Uh, so, a very marvelly day for me, but that's not really board gaming, but that's episode thematic. So, yeah, today is Marvel Day. N now, let us do some questionable Spanax and... Mm, -da 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 -da. I think I sounded well. I've been listening to that again, so I think I have it pretty well. Fan is here to tell us about the new X-Men themed Marvel Champions expansion. Yeah, uh, so... Mutant Genesis from Fantasy Flight Games is the latest Marvel Champions release. Uh, it continue, contains the usual format for the smaller box releases. Two heroes, five scenarios, a campaign. Boom. Uh, the heroes are Cyclops, Colossus, um, Shadowcat and Phoenix. Uh, Colossus and Shadowcat come in the box. And uh, the other two are separate releases. Very briefly, I'll walk through the campaign and the scenarios so you know what's going on, touch a little on the themes, and then we'll talk about the heroes. Campaign starts with Sabretooth. Um, this is a classic. Sabretooth is hunting after Robert Kelly, who is looking to oppress the X-Men because mutants scary, mutants bad. Stanley originally envisioned X-Men to be a... Uh, like an analogy for the civil rights movements and they're very much a stand-in for any oppressed minorities which is why they always kind of feel culturally relevant second scenario it has you're just up against a sentinel um it is it's called project wide awake and it's just just a guy just a sentinel just a robot guy um it's definitely the easiest of the scenarios and um certainly the best one if you're trying to learn out of all of these which makes the ordering a bit odd but plot wise it makes sense because robert kelly project wide awake they kind of feed into each other and i love my miniature of the sentinel so you can put that on the table next to it while playing this game <laughs> that's great um yeah you know if you have miniatures to go along with these it just enhances the experience for sure uh then we follow on to master mold which is like the sentinel uh, production dude thing. It's one of the few named Sentinels that gets a lot of. 
Um, you know, so uh, that's pretty. Uh, it's 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 pretty good that one. The interesting part is that Magneto uh, joins you as an ally for the whole fight, uh, fitting in with his usual way of flitting back and forth and never really making a side. While he has this uh, on and off bromance with Charles, you know that thing that they have between them. Um, Ooh. Yes, whatever that is. Uh, I, I, it's and then after that comes the attack on the mansion, which is my favorite all this, of all the scenarios in this, because there's multiple villains. They're always fun to fight against multiple villains. Um, and would we like to guess what Brotherhood, uh, what Brotherhood mutants turn up? There's four of them. Oh, uh, Mi- Misty. Let, let, let me guess. That's Pyro, Todd, Blob, and oh. The one everyone forgets because he's a guy in a tin suit, Avalanche. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, they are uh, not all of them uh, are actually quite memorable. Uh, there's no Blob is just a overweight guy in spandex. I mean, he, he is. He is. <laughs> yeah. He's no, he's no juggernaut uh, at all. Um, you, I think, Audrey, you mentioned Mystique. Uh, Mystique is yeah. one, of, one of the side villains like the extra packs. She crops up in the Sabretooth scenario and she makes it. Uh, very hard it's a hard scenario anyway she she's a it's very thematic she infiltrates cards into your deck and they disrupt things and cause you to lose allies very cool but frustrating um and then we have the final scenario uh can you guess who the villain is magneto, magneto! <laughs> yep master of magnetism he's been on your side and helped you out as an ally now he's attacking you from i think a space station i think the plotting is something like that uh, it's a good final scenario. It's definitely more enjoyable than fighting Ronan. Ronan sucks. He's no fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Ronan is always sucks. He's always yeah. sucking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so then we have the heroes. Uh, as I say, in the box uh, comes Shadowcat and Colossus. Not Cyclops, as some people think. Um, I wonder who these people are. I wonder who would get Cyclops and Colossus uh, mixed I, I up. I mean, they, they don't <laughs> even look alike. Yeah, yeah, they don't. No, not at all. So Colossus is built around the tough status card. This is a uh, card pr- uh, that protects you from all of all damage. Normally you can only have one. Colossus can have two. Whenever he flips from Alter Ego to Hero, boom, he gets a toughness. His deck is all constructed about gaining toughness uh, to spend it for extra bonuses. You can do some really cool moves with you with your toughness, like spending both tokens in a single turn to hit the villain for eight and then another five and then stun and confuse them. Huge impact. But the downside of Colossus is if you get it, if you lose all your toughness, you really have to power down back to Alter Ego form and then power back up again um, because you lose all momentum without the toughness tokens. It's a shame. Uh, Colossus is fine, but that stuttering only means I feel he's a B, really. But he, to me, he's always been a B class X Man. He's not one of the cool ones. Oh, I mean, so, so not like a B which flies and makes honey. It's like no, be the letter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the letter B. No, a B class, a B class hero would be a different thing entirely. That would be the monarch. No, wait, he's not a B class. He's a monarch butterfly. Anyway, uh, Shadow Cat, on the other hand, is way better. She's a form shifting hero like Spectrum and Vision, um, but she's way better. She's really refined on what she can do. She can form switch during actions and attacks. Um, very, very strong hero. I'm giving her like an A rating. Um, maybe even an A+, plus. so exceptionally good. Probably the strongest X-Man release right now. And then you have two additional packs. There's Cyclops, who is themed around being the team leader and doing tactics. Uh, he has the unique ability. He can have all X-Men of any colour uh, aspect in his deck. It doesn't matter. Um, he's very, uh, very decent, actually. Very strong, very flexible. Best in leadership and protection, in my opinion. Um He's a lot cooler than he is in the movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but to be honest, like Cyclops, I kind of like Cyclops, but he's also often gets stuffed with being the boring one, the serious one, and that whole weird love triangle between him and Jean Grey and Wolverine. Uh, speaking of which, Jean Grey is the other released pack at the moment in her Phoenix form. Uh, she is very interesting because she's basically two heroes in one. 
Um, while she's restrained, she has a power card and you put tokens on it and that keeps her restrained. She's holding the phoenix in and she, all of her attacks and her thwarting and everything she does is weaker. Um, but then if you get rid of all of those, then boom, you unleash the phoenix. She becomes super powerful, like one of the most powerful heroes in the game. But there's a big scary downside to that, which is her nemesis. And her nemesis turns up twice as often as any other nemesis. Can you guys guess who that nemesis would be for Phoenix? Dark Phoenix. Absolutely. The scariest, <laughs> the scariest nemesis in the entire game. She has 12 hit points. She schemes onto her own side scheme that if she completes it, uh, as it moves it from 6 to 12, because it starts on 6, you lose the game. That's it. So this is the first hero who can lose the game by their own mechanics, by their own nemesis, like directly. Um, but she's very interesting. I love threading that line on her and trying to get it right. Um, really yeah, enjoyable. I, I think it's very interesting when you have, uh, let's say, overpowered, not exactly overpowered, but extra powered uh, characters, but it has a trade-off. I think that's a very good way to make things interesting, powerful, and still uh, not easy anyway. Absolutely. They've gotten better and better with um, with this kind of design. Like early on, they did the Hulk and the Hulk was supposed to trade off being very powerful for having a smaller hand size and like having to lose cards and things like that. Um, and to be honest, the Hulk's like he's one of the weakest there is in mm -hmm. the game, which is very ironic and sad. Um, so Phoenix demonstrates a lot of competence and brilliance with their design. Uh, she's very strong and I would be calling her like I think an A for her as well and for Cyclops I think I said that um, so that's everything that's been released right now I'm very oh. quick yep yeah. uh, right yep so um, I'm going to rate this as tied second best uh, campaign box Sinister Motives is my favourite. I think it's the best. It has the best two heroes out of the box. Like, both of them feel really good to play. That's Miles and Ghost Spider. And Spider-Mans are just one of the best factions in the game. And the campaign's really good and thematic. But this is up there with Rise of the Red Skull. And if you like X-Men more, you really can't go wrong with getting this as one of your early ones. Uh, so the final rankings at the moment will be uh, Sinister Motives... Mutant Genesis and Rise of the Red Skull Tide. Uh, Mad Titan Shadow like behind that because it's really disappointing to fight Thanos halfway through his own campaign. <laughs> Loki's the final boss. Yeah. I mean, like Loki's a fun villain and I hope they do a Loki like hero at some point, but um, it, it's a bit anticlimactic. And then there's Galaxy's Most Wanted, which... Uh, is is really hard and the campaign's even harder and the two heroes in it i love them but they're they're really not up to the task yeah it's so rare to find the entire community basically being an unanimous on thinking that this is the worst set <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely it's uh it, i i think it's it's something you go to last of all when you're really ready for a proper challenge uh, ronan will kick the heck out of you with his big hammer he's mean and nasty um it's also the collector um can sometimes just win out of nowhere because of his mechanics being a bit different so it's a rough <laughs> ride I love that name nowhere, but we can... yeah yeah I he's, he's from it. nowhere yeah i know <laughs> yeah um uh, okay, and so like before I wrap up on this, I just want to briefly like talk about the um, the different aspects. I think the overall leadership gains a little bit with a very good ally in Beast. Protection gets a bunch of decent cards uh, that I introduce new strategies. Uh, tactics as a whole becomes its entire new thing with lots of attaching uh, modifiers to minions, which is very interesting. And Cyclops showcases that very well. Justice makes out with several very good cards some use psionic some like there's one that allows you to basically negate a villain scheming which is really interesting and unusual and you get some good uh, allies that are just good in any justice deck not just x-men um, and aggression gets the first really powerful voltron character with wolverine who heals every time like he keeps healing every turn so he's amazing to put a load of modifiers on which is what a Voltron deck is. You play one character and then you buff them with lots and lots of things and then you let them do all the work while your hero sits around at home or something. Um, so, yeah, 
that's pretty cool. And Wolverine's yeah, ju- 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 just like just like in the movies. <laughs> yeah, let Wolverine solve all the problems. <laughs> we like Wolverine best. Yes, yes, absolutely. Rogue's my favorite. She's not coming out till next year. Yeah, Rogue and Gambit will be released together. So oh, this this was the moment where we had to fake surprise. No way. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're really not making this easy for the person who's editing, are you? <laughs> like, like uh, th- there's a whole load of context that's already missing um, in case this gets left in because we're short for time. Uh, I already recorded all of this and I f- my Audacity was incorrectly set up for some reason. It returned to defaults and I didn't notice that. So I talked for 30 <laughs> minutes on this. And none of it was recorded. This is the second time I've done this. And this is the first time in a year where I didn't double check that the microphone was recording me before starting. Um, I'm right now sat here looking at it, recording my voice to be sure that it's still doing it. Anyway, uh, the last thing I wanted to say is that released to like this week is um, Storm and Wolverine. I can't give a verdict on Storm. She's complicated. She has a side deck of weathers. She could be really good, like Doctor Strange and his side deck of magic. She might not be. I don't know. But I can say Wolverine is easily going to be the strongest X-Man by a mile so far. He's really, really powerful. He's got really, really ugly card art. And... um, you know, a surprise, like everybody loves Wolverine, but he's he's going to knock it out the gates and maybe might end up in the S tier of best heroes alongside Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel, uh, Captain America, and Venom, the Flash Thompson but Venom. I- is there that picture of Wolverine where he's stroking that uh, <laughs> picture frame? Oh, uh, I no, I don't think that's in there. Oh. I wish they. I wish they'd redone that. It would have been fantastic. It, that, I would have loved that. The, he's wistfully stroking the picture and people put whatever in there. It's a great meme. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that is uh, Marvel Champions Mutant Genesis. We're in the X-Men arc. I'm here for it. They're my second favorite team after the Spider-Mans. Yeah. Re- rem- rem- remind me to never ask you to comment a new box set. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we are going to move from the Marvel Universe of Earth uh, 616 to the Marvel Universe of Earth 3139, 500... which is the home of Shibipool. It's time for Marvel United. So I'm going to talk here mostly about the first uh, box of Marvel United, because there are so far two editions. The first one, which is Marvel United, and the second one being Marvel United back to X. X-Men again! I do own uh, both, uh, but I've played only the United Not X-Men because the basics of the rules are the same. Um, So I haven't, um, uh, how to say, uh, dived into the X-Men one uh, yet. So in the box you have um, a few heroes. So there are uh, seven heroes in the core box of Marvel United, not X-Men, and uh, three villains. And basically you are playing between uh, one, two, I think four heroes uh, with the players and fighting against one villain, which is AI uh, controlled. The game itself is based on turns and every turns are the same. The villain plays its turn. You have uh, a master plan card because the villain always has a master plan. <laughs> And uh, then the villain resolves all the cards in the master plan from uh, top to bottom, so newest to oldest. Uh, some things depend on where the villain is placed on the board, which is basically six locations uh, in a circle around the master plan card. And um, they do all the different effects of the cards. So each turn, the villain will do one more action actually since the new card was uh, added and then there are the hero turns where heroes draw a card play a card and then they can uh, resolve uh, actions in any order all symbols at the bottom of the card and the previous card played so the different symbols can let the hero move deal damage to enemies at their location rescue civilians or do heroic actions and resolve any action depending on the symbol one of the symbols uh, on the cards has the three colors of the other symbol so green for the move red for the damage and yellow for the heroic action or rescue civilian which basically is a joker uh, card 
every character has uh, every hero has 12 cards so the 12 cards are free um, special action of the hero so uh, three times the same so each hero has uh, its own uh, card so each hero has 12 cards three cards which are a hero special action card with a special name like hulk smash for hulk uh, which do all three the same thing and then the other nine cards have uh, let's say uh, they are all different with the three uh, main symbols, so green for movement, red for damage, yellow for rescue civilian or heroic action, or the green plus yellow plus um, red uh, card, which allows you to do any of uh, these three. And um, you're going to move your heroes from place to place to uh, destroy, defeat thugs, or rescue civilians, or remove help from henchmen or villains, which will basically allow you to uh, um, to play against the master plan of, of a villain. So basically, I will be honest, this game is a risking pandemic, or very close to that. Because with the way that the villain uh, master plan plays uh, as resolve all the effects previously played you get this effect uh, from pandemic like you know what's going to come it's less randomized here but you know what's going to come you know where the villain is based on his card you know where he's going to move he or she uh, you know where the villain is going to move so you know what's coming and so you can semi plan ahead because you see that oh this place is going to get d bad because too many tags risk being there etc uh, etc et so you can uh, definitely plan against that and you get will get the same ish feelings as uh, in a pandemic games so in in my opinion that's a good pick uh, for someone who likes the pandemic but you would who would like something a bit less uh, let's say illness centered, especially after the few years that we've had. Some people definitely don't want to hear more about uh, pandemics, so that would be a very fair pick. Of you could pick the uh, Wrath of the Lich King pandemic of Star Wars one, I think there is now. So lots of uh, pandemic feeling games uh, with different themes. <laughs> Yeah, we, we are getting a bit overwhelmed there. Um, the, so yeah, in, in my opinion, the core box uh, brings um, good gameplay because you have, so as I said, the seven uh, heroes with not too many differences between them. So it's going to be not there that the replayability will be found, but the three uh, villains, they really have um, different uh, behaviors so that's where uh, things are a bit more different and a bit more interesting so yeah that's where most of the replayability is and uh, the stretch goals of the kickstarter added quite a few more um, villains so that's even more replayability and if i remember correctly only the Spider-Verse uh, expansion from the Kickstarter ended up being uh, sold in the US because in France I'm not even uh, sure how things were. Um, but there are there are a few more villains in most boxes and um, that, that really brings uh, more stuff to do so yeah that, that's uh, as i said that's the pandemic feeling uh, i'm still uh, sad that there was not a cosmo uh, in the guardians of the galaxy box we need cosmo we need we need especially now as she's coming in the next uh a movie I, I, we need cosmo I will um, <laughs> campaign for Cosmo because I I, I mean I, I love Cosmo and I discovered Cosmo m more in the uh, latest video game, um, which was an amazing game, uh, in my opinion. Um, I was mostly watching my husband play it and just enjoying the banter between all the characters, to be honest, uh, while I was playing. Ek, Cosmo is cool also. In ah, snap. yeah. <laughs> Ek, Cosmo is just so cool there. So, yeah. Uh, that's it for well, Marvel United main game and I will just have a little talk about the X-Men one for which I have a main pledge plus the Deadpool box because Deadpool um, 
And uh, we mentioned um, Magneto often switching sides. And in this uh, X-Men Marvel United core box, you have six heroes, two villains, aka Juggernaut and Sabertooth, and then uh, two... I don't remember how they called them, uh, but the models for the heroes are blue, the models for the villains are uh, red, and these ones are purple, Magneto and Mystic, because you, they both come either with a villain deck or with a hero deck. So you can definitely have uh, this uh, gameplay of having them uh, at, as either, and you can always imagine uh, that, yeah, the Juggernaut is just doing some mayhem and destroying stuff, included uh, menacing some uh, facilities that would uh, make the Brotherhood and the X-Men uh, vulnerable, and so everyone is teaming up to defeat the Juggernaut, Wh whatever. Uh, you can imagine just uh, anything there, and... Um, yeah, we, we, we said that uh, we, we named most of the major X-Men uh, previously, and so here we do have in the core box uh, Wolverine, Professor X, Jean Grey, Storm, um, the Beast, and Cyclops, which wait, 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 is wait. not Colossus! <laughs> is, is Professor X playable? Yes! Beautiful! Yes. Yes, 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 he do has uh, the yellow, the chair which is yellow uh, and all, I think, plastic. <laughs> and um, I think that uh, Cyclops is uh, in a stretch goal and... Uh, Colossus is in a stretch goal and you do not get him uh, easily. <laughs> okay, nobody likes Cyclops anyway, so <laughs> Uh, it's not that I don't like Cyclops personally, I, I just think that what I've seen from him, and we, we, I'm going to say that I don't think the movies, uh, I, it's not that I don't think, it's either the movies don't show him well, or he's boring, and he always has been and will continue to be boring. Yeah, that's the point. So, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling really into all the Cyclops gimmicks and talks and stuff. I, yeah, I don't think it's a character that I like a lot, so... That's understandable. You are with us. Yeah? I yeah. am? Yeah, you are one of us. Yeah, You're exactly. Of, it's on Cyclops, so... Yeah, and uh, to come back to the Marvel United one, I am still sad that there is no Angela in there. Angela is my favorite character, which is why I have her as my Discord image. And I want her as well in a Chibi Mini. I do have her as the MCP miniature, but I want also the Chibi one because Angela. She's the best. <laughs> And now we're going to go from the gods of Asgard to the gods of a world threatened by shadows. It is Alessio with shamans. Oh, yeah. So, uh, shamans, it's not a Marvel title, but it's a game from this year, from Studio H, and uh, the designer is Maud Chalmel. I hope I said it right. I think it's French because the names are all French there, but uh, I, I don't know, so I, I just hope I did right. And yeah, sounded, sounded fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, Shamans is basically a pretty uh, middling uh, duration uh, card game. It's based on a trick-taking mechanic, and its main gimmick is that uh, there's a traitor among us. Uh, basically in the game you are all shamans uh, who perform every uh, full moon ritual to keep the spirit sword balanced. Now, among all these shamans there are one or two shadows infiltrated, which are traitors and try to propagate shadows to the moon. If they succeed, the shadows win. If the, all the rituals complete correctly, the... Um, the shamans actually win. Now, uh, the cool part of this game is basically uh, that uh, this game tricks you into thinking that it's a team game, like all the shamans must find the shadow. Actually, there's one winner, and backstabbing is basically the main mechanic of the game. Because uh, in this game, uh, you play rounds, the mechanics are very simple, uh, it's trick taking, so there are suits. Uh, suits correspond to spirit wars, and uh, basically you uh, 
just have to uh, play the right suit and advance in a world. Uh, however, you are not forced to play the card of the same suit. You can play any card when someone takes the lead. If you don't play a card in a suit, you advance the power of the shadows. When the power track of the shadows gets to the moon, so to level 9, uh, the shadows win. So basically, uh, you could think that anyone who plays off suit is actually playing for the shadows, but it's not so simple. Because uh, if you play in suit, the player with uh, least power in that suit gets an artifact, which is something which can be activated later, f later for uh, bonuses or special effects. If you play the strongest card in a suit, you get the next the leader for the next round, and uh, you can perform the ritual if you played all the cards in that suit. Uh, now, basically what happens? It happens that uh, the shamans are just watching one another to try to find the shadow, who is of course trying to not get discovered because uh, the shadow only needs to get to 9 on the track without getting killed. Uh, there's an artifact which allows uh, uh, the owner to uh, kill another shaman, so there's a bit of player elimination. It's not really player elimination because it happens at the end of the game when basically tracks are full. Uh, when a specific spirit ward ritual is completed. So uh, what happens is that the shamans are watching themselves to try to find the shadow, to eliminate it before the ritual is done, and they try to just carry on with the rituals. But the shaman don't trust themselves too, because the, uh, you don't want that other shamans win. You want to win yourself, if you're a shaman. So you could want to kill off another shaman even if you know that the shadow is someone else or you could try to make someone else win because uh, your uh, teammates let's say are uh, very close to winning and if they get enough victory points they win the game so since they're just one winner uh, you can uh, you can basically not trust anyone, not even your teammates, you cannot be sure of your teammates. And there's another other thing, which is that there's a ritual, a specific ritual, which allows you to switch role with another player you choose. So if you perform this ritual, you can switch roles with another player and you could be, uh, you could go from shaman to shaman, from shaman to shadow, to sh from shadow to shaman. So. Actually, the game is all of shifting alliance, mistrust, and uh, of cool plays tricked as a trick-taking game with a very simple mechanic. I love this because the psychological aspect is uh, much funnier than trick-taking. There's a lot of trash talking at the table. You can have a lot of plays and you can enjoy every single play. Usually there is one shadow, except if you are playing five players, in that case the shadow teams is made of two shadows. Uh, this is basically how the game plays. Uh, the important thing to know is that you either love or hate this game. Because basically uh, it's completely uh, natural to uh, play to win and if you are excessively competitive I, I have one friend which is who is a very competitive person and he hated this game he, he played two games he, he lost because basically he's very technical he's playing for me maxing he's trying to do the optimal route the optimal choices and he just got tricked and <laughs> the second game he was forced to switch from Shadow to Shaman and he was about to win, so that was completely rage for him. And that's a way, because that's, that's why sh you could hate this game. But if you like uh, hidden roles, hidden traitors, which is actually a bit of metagame, a uh, team game which is not actually teamwork because there's only one winner, then Shaman is for you because it's, uh, it's 
all this. It's like a very, very small war of whispers played with trick taking. So that's the game, basically. Yeah, I remember when Shaman was going to uh, come out and I was mostly looking at uh, the art. Uh, that really talked to me a lot, but I saw that I now know that the trick you're taking games uh, are not for me, so I didn't really pay more attention uh, to that uh, at the time. But I, I really like how all the, the colors play together as you have all these a uh, yellow, these purple cards, and uh, these black, uh, blackish, more gloomy cards. Yeah, uh, uh. actually, the, the graphical style is very minimal, but it's beautiful. Uh, uh, you have to be a fan of uh, modern, minimal uh, uh, drawing style, but the game is very cool. In a way, the design is harmonic. Of course, you uh, it has to be your cup of tea, but... Uh, it is beautiful and it makes a lot of sense inside the game. And and with that ultimate word of the gods, we are out of time for this podcast. Thank you for listening to The Last Standy. You can catch us over at www.patreon.com forward slash The Last Standy on YouTube or subscribe on your preferred podcast app. So it's farewell from Alessio. Bye. Fan. Bye. And myself, bye-bye, and remember that the second E in study is for Ebony.